Hey there, Blade fans. The knife on the table may be familiar to you. This is this old sword, by the way. Uh, but you know that already. <laughs> Welcome back to another knife review. This one has been reviewed before, but it's getting some company today. This is the Swordfish by Best Tech. You may recognize it. It is a perennial favorite. I must have picked this up four or five years ago, maybe. <clears throat> it was one of my first uh, collectibles in kind of like my new era <laughs> of knife collecting. Uh, the old era going back uh, a few decades. <clears throat> but a uh, very popular knife. I know uh, Love Them Knives, LTK, uh, he really likes this knife. It's a full four inch blade with a full swedge on top and a gradual long and tapering belly. Gives you kind of a spear profile, really. And uh, it has um, G10 handles with a, a G10 bolster. Got that V sort of uh, transition between the two. This one is a Desert Tan G10 with a black G10. Okay, I liked the knife enough, even though, it's even though, it's D2, okay? And it's kind of billboarded like that, uh, kind of clumsily. <clears throat> it's got a clip that is not deep carry, but that's okay for many. And it does not transfer to the left side. Put that there. About a year ago, I saw that Knife Center was doing a special swordfish. This in a tuxedo look with the black and white handle. And they happened to turn this one out. Yes, an S35VN. So that was a big bump. A lot of oil or something on this blade. It kind of makes it look brown in spots. I find that happens with a lot of... Uh, Satin blades. <clears throat> you can take it off with a little work with some flits polish, by the way. Um, it's a light knife for the size. Now, we're going to look at some of the differences in a moment because I'm bringing out one more. And the whole reason for this video is that one more. Look at all that skeletonizing inside. Lots of removal from that liner. And it is a thick liner you can see that that mates up quite nicely right about 45 percent even with the tang of the blade so s35 vn tuxedo look same exact profile otherwise um same weight relieving looks like they should be the same weight one thing they did on this one was a deep carry clip Kind of went with the masses there. It is not still not transferable to the left side, unfortunately. Okay, well, drum roll, please. There is the one that came in today. And this one's from White Mountain Knives. I think it was running about 100. And look what they are making that guy out of. Of course, we've all got to have Magna Cut steel and Ultim handles these days, right? except we got a natural JG10 here. There were like two other options, but they looked too much like these two. So I went with the uh, Jade Green. Looks pretty good, I think. Um, they still used a folded over deep carry clip, but it is shiny on this particular one. And no, they did not give you a transfer to the left side. There is a lanyard hole, by the way. Um, one, two, three screws holding each of the large scales on, uh, two, a screw on each side holding the bolster on, and action is still silky smooth on bearings and drop shut. I would say on all of these, but more on the two most recent ones. But here they all are. I normally save the comparisons for the last thing, but they are clones of each other. By the way, none of them has, strangely enough, any jimping 
on the flipper tab. It's a skeletonized flipper tab. And yes, they did that on all of them. So they really didn't change the design much. They're still all liner locks. They changed the clip pretty much. They certainly changed the steel from D2 to S35 to Magna Cut. That's quite the progression, I would say. What we're going to do, we'll probably bring these back again later. What we're going to do is measure nine inches exactly, four inches exactly. You might call it three, nine, eight, but I'm calling it four. <laughs> Blade stock in millimeters, pretty decent, 3.2. Blade stock in inches, 0.13. Handle thickness, 0.60. And that is contoured. Nicely contoured. See if I can get a little more room here. There we go. Because we're bringing out the scale. And we close them up. And we've got 4.45 ounces. Or 6 if you want to be particular. Four and a half ounces, we'll call that. Again, nice action. Very smooth. Not tight at all. Look at that. Great action. Uh, jimping. Short run of it. A little bumpy, but good. You know, fairly useful. You got a little bit. Yeah, they did it on all of them. Little bit of a choil, but it's more of a sharpening choil. I wouldn't stick my finger up in there. Pretty decent plunge grind comes back to there. And uh, you'll certainly get a few sharpenings out of this, depending upon what you're using it for, how hard you're using it. Sorry, don't know the Rockwell on it. Wasn't listed. Maybe you can look it up. It is only a flipper. That's kind of old school. Um, they didn't do any of the uh, combos like you're doing with a lot of knives today. Let's see if it gives the uh, Rat 1 a run for its money, size-wise. Slightly longer. And one more, little more comparison. The Inyan by Kaiser. By, what's his name? Um... Uh, Assassin Knives, I think. Arsenion is the gentleman's name. So, very close, identical. Four inch blade on that, nine inches overall. Well, should you want one, I think it is a good idea because uh, they're coming in the Magna Cut for 100 bucks, I think is pretty darn good. And, you got your choice of different flavors. I'll leave you some links. Don't forget to give this vid a like and subscribe. I will be back soon. Take care.